Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been waiting what seems like an age to be able to do this episode. I think it's been since February, March time, basically since I came back from IWA. And one of the stands that we had to go to was, of course, the Vorsk stand. The reason being is because Lisa, aka Skinny Bitch, arrived one day before me and posted up a cheeky photo of her holding something delightful. Of course, it was a submachine pew pew, aka the VMP1X. Now, there's a couple of different models. The VMP1X is basically the one with the suppressor and the stock, and the VMP1, which is exactly the same, only you don't get a suppressor. My only dealings with owning Vorsk has been the V6 gas. Other than that, I've never had any of their pistols or anything like that. I have seen loads of their Glocks floating about, typically come with a red dot and everything built into them. So it's no surprise whenever they bring out an SMG, it looks very, very cool. Now, I get it, it's not typically what you normally see. It's based kind of around the architecture of an MP9 and there are mill simmers out there that say, hey, just looks crap compared to the MP9. And I get it, the MP9 is iconic. However, there's loads of licensing problems, I think at the minute between KWA, ASG and where can you buy from? I don't know if they've resolved that, might have done, maybe someone can comment below but it has been typically more difficult to get your hands on them. Anyway, bringing it back to the Vorsk, what do you get in the box? Well, I've already opened this shocker. I've already dressed mine up. Now this may be a bold claim, but there was something about this that whenever I looked at it, I thought that it would be the next AAP style cult pew pew. Kind of like the AAP, it kind of came out of nowhere and suddenly there's a million and one modifications. There's two million people using them and every single one of them is different. And for some reason, I just get the feeling that this is gonna be the same. And fingers crossed that does actually happen. The more people that make upgrades, interior, exterior, the better. Lots of people can customize it exactly the way they want it. Maybe someone will bring out different colored slides or something, who knows? Let's do a really bad unboxing because everything's out of the box. And I don't know, maybe people do still like unboxing, but anyway. What you do get is a very funky laminated user manual telling you everything about it. You would normally get your pew of choice. And the other very important thing is that this comes with two mags as standard out of the box. Other things are the spare nozzle, O-rings, hop adjustment key ring, and most importantly, the VMP1 patch. Also, just so you know, you can buy the suppressor and mags separately. And I'm pretty sure you can get the mag covers in different colors separately as well. But don't quote me on that. So with that done, let's get into the good bits. So let's bring mine out. This is it in black. You can also get them in gray. And very soon you'll be able to get them in tan as well. I've added a Watson Solar Spark. The rear stock was black, but I've sprayed it this kind of metallic gold bronze color. So starting at the front, you have a very large flash hider, which also acts as a quick detach mount for the suppressor. It's spring loaded, so you gotta push it down, twist it 30 degrees and let it go, and it will lock and secure into place. There's no wobbles on this gun whatsoever. Underneath the flash hider, you have a 14 counterclockwise thread as is standard. Next up, you've got the body that's mostly polymer. You've got a set of reels in the three and nine o'clock position. Currently they're on the lower position, but they can move up to a higher position up here. There's also a reel underneath where your foregrip would typically go, or maybe even just a hand grip or thumb stop or something. You've got the full reel front to back, and also that's quite a nice feature. It may be very hard to get down to with the stock and a big airsoft mask, but there are fiber optic sights, two at the rear and one at the front. It would be nice maybe to punch that front one out and make it a different color, or else punch these two back and maybe make them red and leave the front one green. Don't know, but I don't know how often I'm gonna use the iron sights. Next up, we have the bolt catch. Works as it should, there's a lock. Disconnect the lock, pull it back and there is the bolt release just here. So whenever you put a new mag in, 
flick that down and you're good to go. When you pull the bolt back and you put the catch on, you can access the hop chamber in here. Use your little key ring for adjusting the hop up and down. Not ideal, but you do get a little key ring with that. So if you stick it on your chest rig or on a lanyard on your belt or something, you shouldn't lose it. The trigger has a safety built into it. So it needs to be pulled first before the trigger can actually be pulled. Next to the trigger, you have the semi full auto switch. And if I spin it around, just below that is the mag release. And it's only on one side of the pistol grip. Well, that's crap. Just imported the footage and the microphone died. So I'm gonna have to do this bit really, really quickly. So I've got myself a lovely gray one. Uh, just to show you the stock, there is a spring here. I'm not too sure why, but for some reason there's a lock at 90 degrees as well as whenever it's collapsed. Obviously collapsed nice and small. With the stock folded, there is a bolt. Take that bolt out and you can screw in like a rifle strap connector there. And I'm pretty sure in the Vorsk website, you can attach an M4 buffer tube, meaning that you can put on pretty much any stock that you wanted. The other thing about the butt stock is that it has 15 degrees rotation to the left and to the right. That's mainly just for whenever you're leaning around the corner, you aren't gonna tilt your riff off to the side because then your BBs will fly off to that side. So it's just to help you correct that without actually changing the position of the stock on your shoulder. So quite a cool wee idea. Next up are the mags. If you buy a black one, you will get the black magazine covers. If you buy a gray one, you're gonna get a gray magazine cover. And if you buy the tan one, I assume you're gonna get a tan magazine cover. Some people are 3D printing already some little caps that you can shove on the top of this and speed load it from the top. However, what I've been doing is using my thumb to pull it down and using the Treedos Unicorn to then drag the follower down and put it in. It's not ideal, but it kind of works. The other thing that I've noticed are the followers are really, really long. I'm just wondering, can someone do what they did with the MK23 and possibly make them shorter, allowing you to put in a few more BBs? Who knows? So on the Vorsk V6 175, it was coming in at 1.2 joules. Now, I don't know where the hop was set there. And also you should note that I was using 0.32 gram BBs. Unfortunately, this is my last bottle of Vorsk and it is empty. So I can't redo the test with 0.2 grams. Hopefully someone else will be able to do that. The test there against the cardboard was the first time that I've actually fired this thing. And there were a couple of things that I noticed. One. I tried pushing the fire selector to eject the mag. So uh, that'll take a bit of getting used to. The other thing is that the mag needs to be put in perfectly. Otherwise it gets stuck a wee tiny bit. I've never used an MP9, so it'll probably just be a little bit of muscle memory to get used to. I know I was in a room full of concrete, but the suppressor, even though it's filled with foam and the spring, didn't do anything to the audio as far as I know. This seems to be a very noisy rat -a tat tat beast, which is a good thing. That's part of the fun of owning a little beast like this. So customizing these little bad boys, I think is gonna be a lot of fun. The suppressor at the end, whilst it doesn't do anything, it does give you that kind of old Mac 10 feel. It also reminds me of some other items that you will get in your typical household. And if you've been following my Instagram, you will see what I did with my suppressor. I got bored, what can I say? So next up, you've got the cool flash hider, as mentioned before. This comes off and rather than being an idiot and unscrewing one of these little Allen bolts and trying to get it off, you need to take out two. And rather than taking out two little Allen bolts and thinking that's it and you can screw it to get it off, there's actually three, so that caught me out. So if yours isn't budging, just remember there's three screws. It's a 14 mil counterclockwise thread, so it should fit loads of accessories. This one is the Action Army FDE that typically goes on an AEP. Kind of looks cool. Although you do kind of get used to the big suppressor, so I'm not too sure whether or not I like it or not. And rather than using the one that came with it or covering it in baked beans, 
I came up with my own. Here we go, check out that bad boy. So this is the Action Army Hive and I've got it all tying in with each other and I think it suits it really, really well. It's kind of got that big can Mac 10 look. I guess you could probably 3D print some barrel spacers and extend the barrel out and get a lot more power out of this thing. I know some people are already making HPA adapters, AirTac being one of them, but they should be ready fairly soon. So if you had a longer barrel, you could dial down your PSI and save yourself some air. Need to do a little cable tidy up, but the pressure pad sits nicely above that rail there. So I think that is my VMP1 complete. How the heck do you carry these mags? They're pretty heavy, so I want something substantial. I have a lot of Novarch pistol mags. They seem to hold really well. There is also the sort of extended, these must be for like long Glock mags or SMGs. They fit as well, although the mag cover here kind of catches on the rim, so they probably won't go down that far. That may be a good thing because then at least the feed lips aren't resting on the bottom there. The other thing that I have are these Evo pouches, also by Norwich. I think they're Evo mainly. They do probably fit other SMGs, but they fit really well and there's no way they're gonna fall out on you. And the other system that I often use are these elastic inserts, which, go into these sort of chest rigs but there we have it i can't wait to get out for a little game with this little bad boy i think i'm going to take it straight outdoors i'm not really into cqb indoor arenas if there's anything else that you can think of or want to ask i'll try my best to answer it if i don't know then i'll ask someone a lot more knowledgeable or i'll even reach out to borsk themselves but hopefully I've covered quite a few things there for a rough, very, very rough my style unboxing. I'm not going to do anything to the internals right now. I might do down the line, but I want to see how it's performing first of all. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. In the meantime, peace.